So let's talk a little about the, uh, it's the International Museum of Cartoon Art, is that correct? Right. All right, now this started, well, when did it start, where did it start, how did it move, and what's going on with it now? Let's, well, it let's cover it. It started museum. in 1974. Right. But, it, uh, but the whole, whole idea started with Dick Brown and myself. We were down in Jamaica, Flor uh, Jamaica and the islands in the Caribbean mm -hmm. uh, at a cartoonist convention. Yeah. And we were sitting there afterwards watching the sun go down and drinking our tequilas and, you know. So, uh, you know, oh, okay. as usual, cartoonists are saying, how they don't get any respect. I don't get any respect. You know? right. why, don't they, why aren't cartoons considered art? They're as great of artists as uh, Jackson Pollock or anybody else, you know. How come we never get any respect? Dick Brown says, it's because we don't exhibit it in museums. And I said, well, let's start a museum then. So I came back and I organized... Uh, the top cartoonists in the country, like Rube Goldberg and Milton Kniff and Walt Kelly and a whole bunch of them, and we decided that we would start plugging to get a museum going. Mm -hmm. We were going to the Washington Museum, uh, Washington, D.C. They were building the Kennedy Center at the right. time. Right. So we figured we'd get in there. Went to Stars and Stripes and tried to get something started in their building. Right. So we went to a, a Catholic monastery that was that were moving out. We tried to rent that building. We just tried everything. Came to, back to New York. We went all over the place. We went to universities, and nothing seemed to work out. And uh, one day, I lived in Greenwich, Connecticut. Uh -huh. One day, a neighbor of mine said, "We got this old family home sitting there, looking down over the bay, right. two blocks from the train station." He said, "I wish somebody come along and start a museum there." I said. You're kidding. <laughs> uh -huh. So we fixed it up. Uh, my, his brother, I had a whole bunch of friends, get, just got out of college, right. put them all to work painting and cleaning up. We fixed the place up, got it ready for a museum. Uh, we bought exhibit uh, walls and things like that. And we opened up in 1974, and it was just, we were just having a wonderful time. Yeah. Bus loads of people came. People really? came from all over the world to come see it. And one day he says, you're wearing out my house. He said, I can get more rent. Now that you got it all fixed up, I can get more rent than you guys are paying. Okay. And he wouldn't renew. Wow. wouldn't renew our lease. He kicked us out. Wow. They were the, well, the lousiest things that ever happened to me. And, so, so. And, then, and then you moved the museum. Yeah, then we said, let's don't let this happen again. Let's, next time, let's buy the building. Right. So I said, why don't we move up and take... Uh, the lemon he just gave us and make a lemonade out of it. We'd come out even better. I said, let's buy a castle. So we looked all over. You'd be surprised how many castles there are in Westchester County. Yeah, yeah, all are. over the place. All these guys came over and made a bundle. They came over from England, made a bundle over here. Yeah. They wanted to be like kings and princes, and so they built yeah. themselves a castle. Yeah, sure. So anyway, we bought a doggone castle. They've been empty for a long time. Need a lot of fixing up for $60,000. <laughs> nice job. Yeah. That, that was sort of um, a chance, sort of a funny chance sort of thing, too, because I was dating somebody in this neighborhood, and I used to take a turn down towards her street, and I'd look up on the hill, and I'd see this castle with a turret and everything up right, there. Right, yeah. And, and he was looking for a castle at the time, and I said, <laughs> and I asked people, I said, what is that up there? He says, oh, he used to be the big industrialist in the area. He owned all this area and built all these houses for his employees. And he wanted to be the king on the top of the sure, hill. Sure. I said, well, who lives there now? And they said, I don't think anybody's there anymore. So I told him, and that ended up being where they moved The in. old place is haunted. It was because well, it looked like something out of prison. The roof sure, leaked. You, you yeah. could ice skate in the dining room, for instance. Wow. Uh, crenellation all over. Uh, plaster uh, molding had fallen down. It was all over. Just a mess. Yeah. So one of the guys, the boys, friends of my son, was a sculptor, so he, he got all the molding down and recast uh, it, and glued it back up again, and boy, in no time at all, we had that place looking like a like a castle. Yeah. <laughs> so we were there 15 years okay. until my wife Kathy uh, had an office up on the uh, third floor of the turret. Mm -hmm. she heard this loud crash, and she looked out, and the crenellation was falling off. Oh. And we had an inspector come out, and he said, the trouble is, this was the first reinforced concrete building oh, in the world. Okay. This, right. The guy, that, right. this industrialist that owned it, right. invented this. They built the base of the Statue of Liberty in the Holland Tunnel based on his idea of, of putting yeah. uh, iron rods 
through and then putting concrete on top of it. Yeah. What happens is that any moisture that gets in uh, builds up the rust, and that rust expands and uh, actually cracks, the, cracks the, the plaster or the, yeah. or the concrete off. So he said, it's gonna cost you a million dollars to get this place back in shape. Wow. So we started looking around, they heard about us in Florida and they wanted something for people to do when it rained, they couldn't go to the beach. So they said, come on down here and start your museum. And they rented us the land for a dollar a year for 50 years. And this was uh, Boca Raton. in Bo the, 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 the big museum in Boca, okay. So I designed the building, or helped, helped design it. Right. And we built it, and uh, we were there for about 10 years, I guess. Sure. Until uh, two of our largest donors uh, went bankrupt. Marvel oh. Comics went bankrupt. They yes. they had pledged a million dollars. Right. And American Candy Company went bankrupt, and oh. then we had a contract with them for five hundred thousand dollars a year for five years. Gotcha. So, uh, and that was just a guarantee. It wasn't what. Right. They said you'll make twice that at least. Right. So anyway, we ran out of money, and we tried to rent out the second floor, which we just use for storage. Uh huh. And the city said, wait a minute. You have, we have to approve whoever you bring in. Oh. And they wouldn't approve anything. We took 40 different entities to them, and yep. they wouldn't approve anything. Oh, wow. So then we tried to sell it, and they said, oh, right. now you can't sell it without our approval. Really? So it took us another three years <laughs> oh, to okay. sell it, and we ran out of money. Sure. So we came to New York, and uh, at first we were going to go uh, to the Circle Line Pier, down right okay. over here. I heard rumors of the Empire State Building. Yeah. First of all, the guy at the Circle Line Pier was going to build a museum over his pier. Oh, okay. So people would come and yep. take the Circle Line and go to, go to our museum and everything. Yeah. And when he went for permission, they said, oh, you can't build anything on the west side until the master plan is done. Oh. Okay. He said, you know how long master plans take? He said, you better find another alternative site. So I was on the golf course in Greenwich, Connecticut, and ran into the owner of the Empire State Building. Yep. I said, how'd you like to have a cartoon museum there? He said, let's talk about it. So we worked up a, a contract, uh, a lease. We put down $187,000 in uh, security deposit. Right. We signed the lease. Right. And they were going to sell the tickets when they sold tickets to the observation tower. Okay. And then we were going to split the proceeds. They figured 700,000 people, 10 bucks a piece. Seven million dollars, they get three and a half million, we get three. Yeah, that's not bad, yeah. And then somebody in their building complained and said, uh, we can't allow this, we don't want you to uh, have that many people in here. Oh. And so, and so uh, they decided that we cancel the lease and charge us $850,000 a year in rent. Wow. And they gave us three months to raise it. Right. And. Oh, yeah, that's we we couldn't raise that money right. that that fast. Right. So they canceled that, and then we didn't have any place to go. We found it impossible to raise money unless you've got a location, and a, you know everybody knows yeah. what you're going to do. Yeah. So right now we're just in right. limbo. All the stuff that you have, and you still have everything for the museum. Right? Yeah, we have two hundred thousand drawings. Right. And, and it's a. Uh, Estimated storage, so if, they, yeah. if there's anybody out there, yeah, if there yeah. has a lot of money, they just want to give away. Where do they go? How do they how do they get in touch with you? Uh, online? Do you have a website? Do you have a, do they, they, they we have a website? website. Uh, uh, Morewalker.com. Well, the museum website is easy to remember. It's cartoon.com. Cartoon.com. No, no, cartoon cartoon.org. Cartoon cartoon.org. Org. Yeah. yeah. But there's Mortwalker.com as well, and of course to read. High and Lois, uh, Beetle Bailey, and the archives, there's uh, dailyinc.com. Yep. All right. Well, gentlemen, it is a huge pleasure having you here, and uh, we're honored that you uh, graced us with your presence. I'm impressed by your knowledge. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> you know exactly what to ask us. Mort Walker, <laughs> Greg Walker, we appreciate having you here. Here from the New York Comic Con with the Walkers. Uh, we'll be right back.